So, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to our second session about Renogenon by Enris. Uh, so, we are so happy to have you here. Uh, so, Enris will just talk about briefly what he talked about in his first presentation, and he will keep on doing that in the second presentation. Hopefully, you will enjoy it. Thank you, Enris. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Reha. Uh, assalamu alaikum to all of you. Welcome in this presentation. I'm very honored to speak about René Guénon, which I consider as one of the greatest metaphysics, one of the greatest uh, thinker of spiritual tradition of all the 20th century, of all the tradition, of course. So we'll start by, by the beginning. We start to speak a little bit about René Guénon himself. Who was this man? And we'll try to explain also his books in order to understand better the man through his works. So René Guénon, or his name known also as Sheikh Abdel Wahid Yahya, was the one that found the idea of the primordial tradition, which means that this tradition for him, it is a knowledge, a hikmah, a, a wisdom more than a knowledge, that is transmitted by a non-human origin, a divine one. René Guénon is the founder of the school of tradition sometimes called also perennialism. For René Guénon, the traditional forms, they all depend on a single principle, which he names for this particular cycle of humanity, the primordial tradition, in French, la tradition primordiale, which is the primary source and the common ground of all particular traditional forms. There is only one God, la ilaha in Allah, that for René Guénon means that there is only one tradition, the primordial tradition, that takes different forms in time and space. There is also a Quranic meaning from Dinul Hanif, which means the primordial tradition. René Guénon was born in 1886 in Blois, 20 kilometers southwest of Paris in France, and he passed away in Cairo, Egypt, in 1951 and here you can see a photo when he was young and a photo when he was older in Cairo as you can see in the photo in Cairo in Egypt he's in traditional dress but he's not in Arabic dress because even the form that he applied to Islam was the traditional form of Islam which is behind form let's say common forms and also his uh, dress it's very symbolic one because it's black and white dress which means uh, esoteric meaning and all both of these two colors indeed for him are not colors but are sifat of Allah and all these works you have to understand them seen by this primordial tradition and not let's say Arabic Islam or Turkish Islam or etc etc that we know so a personality that uh, had a great impact to René Guénon was Sheikh Amil Abdelkader al Jazairi. He was a very, very important Algerian Islamic scholar, a great Sufi, but also a military leader who led the struggle against the French colonial. In fact, he came in France 28 years before was born René Guénon and was prisoner in a castle, which is 28 kilometers away from the city René Guénon was born. And also when René Guénon went back to Cairo, he found the son of the Sheikh of Emil Abdelkader al Jazairi the chef of a Shazidiya Tariqa, and he followed him. So there is a direct connection, esoteric connection, between Emir Abdel Kader al Jazari and René Guénon. When René Guénon came to Paris, he was young, he was 25 years, and he immediately, between 1909 and 1912, started to write some re review, some different articles, in a review that he called La Gnos, La Marifa. And from the beginning, he was, as you can see in the picture, trying to start to explain the primordial tradition, also in Islamic faith, in uh, metaphysic of Hinduism, because he spoke also old Sanskrit. And also he was speaking about Taoism because he knew very well Chinese also. And he was speaking also about old Christian esoteric. So in 
all these articles he wrote from the beginning he explained all what after in his life he will write and the idea of this review gnos was to speak about the integral knowledge in order to transmit the total truth which are the common roots of the traditions and of the revelations and you can find them in traditional religions which are always identical in substance also different in forms René Guénon's first book came one century before, in 1921, and the title was Introduction to the Study of Hindu Doctrines. Uh, and it's, sorry, I think we cannot see the photos right now. Uh, right now, yes, it's okay. But your camera is off. I don't know whether you would like to turn on your camera. Yes, you can see me now? <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> and you can see the screen also. Do you see my screen? No, not yet. And now? Yes. And the camera? No. I don't know. It's I don't know how to do that. Camera. Ah, I know. I know. Sorry. Yes. It's okay now. Yes. So it is important that we did a little, let's say, stop because we are speaking about his first book, right? And. This first book is the introduction to the study of Hindu doctrines. And in, in fact, in fact, if you see my camera, I have another book of his, which is uh, in French, Aperçu sur l'esotérisme islamique and le Taoisme, which means introduction to the esoteric Islamic, so Sufi doctrine, Tasawuf and Taoism. Uh, all the books of René Guénon, I like this. I mean, if you open, if you open a book of René Guénon, you see that you don't have never reference as other scholars from the beginning until the end of the book he speaks his own words and most of people start to to think that and to to ask where he found his reference and we see it in the end of the presentation that there are a lot of mysteries about his knowledge we know that he speaks 13 languages that he very very young boy he had incredible knowledge about traditions uh, different traditions but there are something that is more it is not common so from the beginning from his first book he start to to understand and to explain of course what is the primary tradition and Sayyid Hussein Nasr said that this book came like a sudden burst of lighting it was an intrusion sorry into the modern world the major point of this book is to start to define what is tradition, what we say at the beginning. The development of the traditional school or traditional school, the relationship between religion, theology and metaphysics, and in particular for this first book, a comprehensive overview of Hinduism, which for René Guénon, it is the most ancient and a complete spiritual tradition in terms of metaphysics. He said also that Hinduism in his uh, origin, uh, not in the form we know today, of course, it is the first uh, revelated tradition. And Islamic, of course, is the last revelation. So it is very important for him to understand these two uh, different poles in order to understand what is the link between them. That's why from the beginning, he wrote books in order to say be attention about the false uh, spiritism what he saw say in this book in french spirit, spirit in english the spiritist fallacy two years after in his book he had a double goal first one to baffle the modern theories of spiritism which claim to replace the existing religions and second to clear the ground 
in order to make place for a real spiritual, metaphysical theory, René Guénon we say. Because at the time he used to live in Paris and he used to go often to the some spiritist group, which were narrow spiritist tradition from Christian religion. But they are not, let's say, in a, in a traditional religion. They were not really in Christian uh, esoteric religion. So that's why at the beginning he went in this group in order to take the best person of this group away from them and to critique them in order to clear this ground for real spiritual and metaphysic theory. That's why he wrote also a book one year after. I mean, most of the book he wrote them much more before they were editing. So we are not sure 100%, but we know that most of them were written before. This is also, uh, let's say, a very, very incredible thing that he, from the beginning in his uh, head, he had very clear, clear idea of what he was, he was doing after. This is a very important book. And for the first time, he touched on very general public for this book because he was speaking about Western civilization and Occident or Orient. At that time, Orient and Occident, his book, is he presented Western civilization as a society which had only developed in a purely material sense. If nothing was changed, the West was heading towards an inevitable catastrophe. There was no cleavage of nature between Orient and Occident, but it was the Occident that had deviated from its own tradition since the Renaissance and had separated from other traditional civilizations. He presents the possible points of arrangement between East and West because a rapprochement was always seemed possible and desirable to him. And indeed he saw, he saw himself as a, as a bridge between East and West. It was necessary that Western abandon their new idols, the illusion of progress and science. Guénon called for the establishment of a Western spiritual elite and a recovery of the Occident, which would be based on Eastern elites still existing by recognizing the common metaphysical principle of the various traditional civilizations. The elite would constitute an arc of understanding between different traditions. The most favorable solution remains that the Occident gets back to its original traditional Christianity rather than conversion to Oriental traditions. The book that follows, it's a key book in uh, René Guénon uh, legacy. It is the Esotericism sorry. of Dante. Yes. And I, sorry, again, we can I don't know. Whenever I just try to warn you, then the appearance of the pictures, photos, I don't understand. Okay, I keep going on. It's the no Baraka. Everything is hidden at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> we have to be patient. Thank you very much for alerting me. So we continue. So in this book, it's, a, it's, it's one of the most important book of Renegano, of course, because he's speaking about the importance of Dante, in particular, the Divine Comedy. And for him, this is the key moment of the Christian esotericism. So Guénon pointed many similarities, similarities sorry, between the Divine Comedy and the Night Journey of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Kitab al-Isra, the Book of Night Journey, and the Futwa al mekkiyah Revelation from Mecca of the great scholar Ibn Arabi. He explained that these similarities did not came from borings in the profound sense of the term but were related to the spiritual correlation between the initiatic Sufi orders and the orders of the mystical medieval Christian tradition. And in fact, René Guénon elaborate even more this theory in a lot of other books that will follow. He said that if you see links or let's say similarities between uh, sacred tradition, it is not because it is not sorry because one tradition took from one another. No, it is because they have all one origin and they have, they have all the divine origin. So that's why they are in concordance with the truth, with the Haq. The book after, it's a very important book, maybe one of the three most important metaphysic books he wrote in this life. It is called Man, Man and His Future, according to the Vedanta. In this book, he describes part of the doctrine of the Vedanta, which is traditional Hinduism form, focusing on the human being. 
his constitution, his states, and his posthum future. The noun starts from the fundamental distinction between self and me. Because self is the essence, the transcendent, the principle of being that it contains all the states of manifestation, as well as all the states of the non-manifestation. All manifested states represent manifestation or universal existence, where everything is connected. Nothing can fundamentally be isolated from the rest of the manifestation, because there is oneness of existence, Tawhid, as the principle of the manifestation is one. In this uh, period, he wrote also, I mean, he published uh, also the very, very special book, which is the king of the world. And this book, it's about the, the primal tradition, uh, primordial tradition, la tradition primordiale, which is the unique truth which underlies, according to him, all the spiritual traditions of the cycle of humanity and develop the thesis according to which the title of the king of the world applies to the principle which is the primordial and universal lawgiver, which formulates the law, the dharma, proper to the conditions of our world and our cycles of existence. He wrote that all the tradition speaks of a holy land and all these lands are images of the sacred land. The book that we finished last presentation was The Crisis of the Modern World. I mean, maybe it's the first book that I recommend you to read to Negeno. It is the most well-known, I guess, book in the world and translated in a lot of language, of course. His book, it's a key book because in his book, he resumed and all his critic of the Western world. And the work, this book, this work had a great, great impact at the time much more than the previous one. In this book, the first chapter is the dark age. He presented this age uh, in connection with the Hindu doctrine of human cycles, Manvatara, which is humanity can be for him and for his doctrine, of course, at the end of its cycle. Because we have, you know, a lot of cycles from the golden age until the dark age, and he is saying, according to Hinduism tradition, that we are living now the last time of the dark age. So the worst of all the ages. And he explained why, of course, uh, because in this time, which is called Kali Yuga or the dark age, it corresponds from the beginning of the iron age for, for let's say for humanity at the time of the Greek mythology this age would be characterized by a darkening of traditional spirituality. For Negeno, the Kali Yuga would have started in the 6th century before the Christian era, which in particular, the beginning of the secular point of view in Greece. The Renaissance in Europe had accelerated this process. The result was a civilization that denied any higher principle, reducing everything to the purely human, human elements. Individualism, egalitarianism, social chaos linked to the establishment of the democratic system since the French Revolution resulted from the end of any social hierarchy. And the result was a world entirely turned toward materialism. The second chapter is East and West. According to Guénon, traditional societies are similar to each other, while Western civilization, which has become anti-traditional, it's opposed, opposed sorry, to the traditional societies of the East. To access metaphysical, non-secular knowledge, the West must turn to the East. The Western intellectual elites are the only one able to initiate themselves into Eastern knowledge and give the West back contact with true spirituality. Just the title of the following section. Third one is knowledge and action. Fourth, sacred science and secular science. After individualism, six, social chaos. Seven, a material civilization. Eight, the Western invasion. And the last one is some conclusion. So as I said last time, this book was translated in Turkish 
by a great scholar that passed away last year, peace behind him, Rahmetli Professor Dr. Mohamed Kanuk, which I had the honor to know personally. And of course, he's also translated in my language, native language in Albanian and a lot of language. So you can easily find it. So now we are speaking about what you didn't touch last time. It is his second period of his life where he was still living in France before going to Egypt. But he started more and more to speak about what is metaphysics. What are these principles? In fact, he also explained this before in the book, for example, uh, Man and Vedanta, The Future of the Man. But in this book that I present today, he's focusing much more in metaphysical uh, notions and explain how we can understand in order to be initiated and to reali realize them fully. So a very important book he wrote in 29. At the time that René Guénon is uh, publishing this book, he's the unique, of course, scholar in West. I mean, as important scholars, because he has a lot of other person who are working with him, who are very, very uh, knowledge person. But he was the one who had more impact. And the other, let's say, school were completely in the opposite of what he was doing at the time. They were seeing everything in the modernity. It's OK. They were completely like, I mean, it's very important. I said last time that René Guénon starts to live in Paris and to write articles and books at the time that France became the first laic state of the world. And the church, traditional church of France, was separated from the from the politics. So in this book, he was speaking about exactly the same problem, re the relations between spiritual authority and governance. And he said the master key phrase, phrase that she's for René Guénon, all legitimacy can only have a spiritual source. And all deviation in the modern world have their origin in the revolt against the spiritual authority. And he's playing, he's playing this from the time of the Renaissance, for example. All the king of the France before Renaissance were all connected to the spiritual power of the Christian church. The spiritual power of the, of the church at the time before Renaissance was the center of the governance. But after them, they did, a, let's say, a revolt and they put their own families, their own authorities, which are just governance in the center of the life. And that's why from the time until now, if you see in the most important cities of Europe, for example, you'll see that all churches were in the center of the city. And from then and now they start to do build less and less spiritual places. And even when they built, most of them was outside the city or not in the center. There are a lot of things to say about this book, but maybe we have questions after and we will uh, try to explain more. Another book, which is maybe the most, one of the three, maybe actually the most metaphysic books of René Guénon, it is the symbolism de la croix, the symbolism of the cross. Uh, which and probably, we cannot yes. see the photos. <laughs> yes, we'll I come. The photo know. Right now, did you, and, you know, did you press anything in the bottom? Right now, I can see the photo. No, no. When you say we cannot see, it appears. <laughs> okay, it was my last warning. Then I shut up. <laughs> no, no. There is nothing to see. I mean, everything is to, to listen because it's not just the title. And uh, for Negeno, it says that the most important thing is to be concentrated. For him, the concentration was the most important spiritual value. Uh, you can read his books in different manners. Actually, some of his books are difficult to read, as this one. Most of people that read the title of the book, The Symbolism of the Cross, they think, ah, this is an interesting book in order to understand Christian spirituality. But it has nothing to do with that. I mean, this book is a universal book. Most of uh, French people that were you no know, Christian, very devoted Christian, read this book, they didn't finish it. <laughs> and some of people who were not at all Christian, they not only they finish it, but they start to apply it. Because as I say from the beginning, he's speaking about principles. So in this book, which is a key book, he says that the symbolism, it is possible 
in order to approach the supra-rational through the intellectual intuition, a truly unlimited mode of knowledge, because the symbolism has a non-human origin. And according to Guénon, the sacred science of the symbol is found in all spiritual traditions, and certain symbols, by their very nature, have similar meaning in different traditions. And this is the case of the sign of the cross, which symbolizes the realization of the being delivered. For example, in Islamic tradition, we have a 60th century miniature, it all appears, inshallah, after, celebrating the Muhammad Sallallahu ascension to heaven. The Isra, the nocturnal voyage of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu from Mecca to Re Jerusalem symbolized the integration of the human state symbolized by the horizontal axis. And if you can symbolically think about a cross, uh, think about, I mean, the horizontal line, which is the axis that Prophet Peygamber Sallallahu did from Mecca to Jerusalem, which is the Isra, in order to have access to the center of the being, which is the center of the cross. The ascension to heavens of the Prophet from Jerusalem, the mirage, symbolized the ascent of the vertical axis of the cross, and the acquisition of the higher states of being. Can I okay. comment or shall I wait for the end of the presentation? We will end in five minutes, inshallah. So. Okay. And we'll speak about that, of course. And uh, this book is was a key book when he published this book, The Symbolism de la Croix, The Symbolism of the Cross, because at this book, he did a dedication, of course, to his uh, friends and to his collaborators. And from that time, from 1930, he dedicated in the book, Sheikh Abdel Wahid Yahya. And people were very surprised because, in fact, he, he embraced Islam 20 years before, but he didn't spoke in public about that. He kept rather secret, I mean. And from that time, he starts, I mean, to, to speak about that publicly. So uh, very may, maybe other people that know him were very surprised about them. Uh, some French scholars that wrote the book and saw that he was signed as a Sufi Sheer, although the book was incredible, they said that this book, it's mostly a, a Muslim book. So they start to critic him even more than before. And because the subject, the publishing of the book was a subject of many criticism of the Catholic authors. They were accusing it of pantheism huh? and denying the difference of Christianity with other traditions, especially with Islam. And denying the mystery, they said to René Guénon, you are denying the mystery of Christ. And René Guénon replied, he said that these critics for him were totally null because the truth is too high for these people, them. They, these kind of people cannot understand the truth. And the last book that I wanted to present you today is the book he published also in this period, in 32. It is the multiple states of being. In his work, in this work, sorry, René Guénon explained how total being can be conceived. A total being, for which the human state is only one state among an infinity of other others that we'll have to know before reaching the total freedom. The theory of multiple states of being is the fundamental, fac fundamental factor in René Guénon presentation and other works will refer to, to it after. This book he published at the time that he decided to go to Egypt. And from there and on, he published uh, less book than before. After Second World War, he published also his fourth last book that we will present, inshallah, next time, which are his third, let's say, uh, phrase of his life, which is totally uh, symbolic and speaking about how to be initiated to a spiritual tradition and how to realize it completely. 
And uh, when he went to Egypt, his life started to change also because he was completely, I mean, in the Sufi environment at the time. So thank you very much for your very kind uh, attention. And please, if you have questions, first questions for I'm sure it'll be a nice question and hope to, uh, to reply. It. Thank you. Thank you. It was really nice again to hear this presentation. Uh, so, okay, I keep on with my own questions then first. <laughs> Thank you for the floor. Well, first, I just shared in the chat box, there is a Spanish priest, um, Asim Palacios. He is also talking about divine comedy and uh, its relationship with Islam, because he thinks that uh, Dante, in fact, was influenced by this Islamic uh, event or Islamic uh, experience. Uh, which happened to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I think Reno Genon's uh, comment is a little bit different, but maybe you would like to have a look at this article I just shared in the chat box. Thank the you. second thing is that the uh, his book, uh, The Symbolism of Cross, it's really interesting that he just chose this symbol, cross, because it is really um, remarkable and really, you know, I don't know, for Muslims, I really wonder about uh, the reactions of Muslims. Is, is there any comment from Muslim side for this book? And also, why did he choose this symbol? Maybe he was just trying to show the Christian world that there is only one reality, even though it's the symbol of Christianity. In fact, it's also talking about the whole reality. Maybe it is a message that he tries to deliver to the people. Um, but you know, his comments like vertical and horizontal reality and how he combines this with the experience of our prophet, it was amazing. It's really nice, thank you. Thank you, it's a, it's a key point, a key question you did. There are a lot of whales, a lot of things that we don't know about René Guénon. As I said before, one of the things that is very, very unusual, of course, it's where he finds his sources. Because as I said to you, he wrote books, he wrote articles, he wrote 10 times more than books, uh, correspondence with personalities from around the world. So I think that in the year and the centuries that are coming, we have much more publication about René Guénon than we had before. So we are speaking just about one part of his thing that they, they, he delivered to us. I think the case of René Guénon, it's a, for me, it's a unique case. And it, it, it can only be understood if you understand that he, he has horizontal uh, sources, of course. He speaks a lot of language. He had friends from all around the world. Every time his collaborators were going to different uh, countries of the world in order to reach some very higher uh, sheikh, some very higher guru, some very higher spiritual authority, in order to have direct uh, wisdom from them. Not only, uh, let's say, uh, books, but uh, to have the, the prophetic tradition, which is totally oral. It was not written. So René Guénon, thanks to God, benefited to this uh, very, very big apport. He was very clever. He knew how to work with people. So he was, let's say, the head of, uh, it was not organization, but scholars, spiritual scholars, that were, that were working for him. It was a network, of course. So this is very important to understand his horizontal uh, sources that are for the time unique because he's as a bee, you know, as a bee, but a spiritual bee that is going in the flower, in a flower to take the best nectar in order to produce the best honey possible. And no one did this as like far as I know, even today, as he did as he worked at the time. Uh, but but there is much more than this. This is just the let's say horizontal uh, dimension of René Guénon. He had also vertical uh, source. And last present uh, in next presentation, I will say that when he was young, he went uh, to to go to Paris, and he described something that is completely unusual for a human being. He had some revelations from. He don't say God. Actually, in his uh, books, he never speaks about God. Very, very few times he, he say God, because he's speaking with a symbolic and a parabolic, uh, as the sacred book also, of course, speaks. But he said that he had uh, some, some voices that were saying to him some very high uh, realities. And uh, we can understand his 
uh, goal or his message only if we understand from the beginning that he has two uh, two meaning or to deal with this both source horizontal one and vertical one so for this book which is very important book the the symbolic de la croix the symbolic of the cross i think your question is right because he wanted i think to speak to christian because he said that unfortunately christian tradition was wasting its spiritual source but from the renaissance so very old uh, topic and he found he actually he was looking about some great masters of christian spirituality in west he found a very uh, important one in italy which is padre pio which is a very very mystical christian personality in france the, he didn't really found uh, let's say a real christian master he found some person which were following uh, some christian esoterics but he said that in generally christian uh, church denied his own esoteric or spiritual uh, learnings that's why in france especially in france they adopt the laic system because one century before in the 19th centuries 19th century the church of the time was very uh, very hard one they were condemning everyone that was not following the church uh, i mean ideology and uh, this was a reaction of the elite of france at the time that's why they started with the philosophy of les lumières and they started with kant with uh, also not not only philosophic but also in, in if you read book for example of the french uh, elder of the time you see that they are in opposite with the church so René Guénaud uh, thought that the problem, the key problem of, of the time was not the society, but was the spiritual uh, authority, which is the church, that was not going to deliver a spiritual message. And he was saying to, the, to some friends of him that you cannot be initiated and be realized in spiritual path if this tradition cannot permit you that. So he said in general in general you have to be realized in your own tradition because it's easier for you because it's your mother language because it's your heritage etc but he said if you see that this tradition and it was the case of the christian unfortunately catholic but also uh, other part of christian uh, tradition that were empty at the time empty of spiritualism empty of esotericism and dante was the opposite dante was full of spiritualism and esotericism so he said to them you have to know better oriental traditions hinduism taoism islamic tradition because they are still alive in a spiritual deliverance of the teaching and that's why he himself he adopted this this school because he one century before us he uh, understand and he realized that in western tradition unfortunately he could couldn't realize spiritually himself. Speaking about, I will say something, what he said, especially for this book, The Symbolism of the Cross, he said that in the human point of view, in a microcosmic point of view, the horizontal line of the cross, as I said before, symbolizes the human state, where the state of the being, if we consider a being other than man, but the center is the heart, where he can enter in contact with the transcendent the transcendent the upper part of the vertical axis that don't, so the state superior to the human being because the human being has unfortunately most the inferior part of his uh, his more in what we say in, in tasawuf haivan in fs or in uh, i don't remember the different lower self Yes, lower self, but also in Arabic, there are names about the different makams. His idea was to go from body to the heart and from heart to the spirit. Tamam, tamam. Thank you. Because, emare. Emare, because for him, there is a big difference between heart uh, makam and spirit makam. It is not at all the same. Uh, the ruh, the spirit, it is the makam that go towards 
the realization of the vertical line. So he was saying that the center of the cross in the esoteric cross, of course, represent what is designed as the Edenic state, the, the Old Testament or the divine station that a man, a human can obtain in this station, in the center of this symbolic cross, he can obtain the great peace, the great Saddam of Islam. And this spiritual path corresponds initially to the journey on the horizontal axis toward the center by integration of the whole of the human state. And this integration corresponds to the, to the breath, which is a spiritual breath that gets up, I mean, the mirage for the universal man, for the insani coming. And this stage is symbolized by the nocturnal journey, as I said before, the Isra of the Prophet Muhammad from, uh, from Jerusalem to the Islam to the higher reality of Allah and he says that our other stages or other uh, dimension other compensation other veil or other makam that are revealed but maybe it's not the moment to speak about that because it's different and then mostly I can better uh, uh, explain much more better that in French than in English some some English concept for me are difficult because I, I speak much more better French than English so just to finish for all this book, the idea of this book, it's the cross is the beginning as a spiritual esoteric meaning to go to the macrocosm, from the microcosm to the macrocosm, from the horizontal realization to the vertical realization. And the, the barzak, the join of them, as I said before, is the center, the spiritual heart, which is the, the spirit, uh, the ruh of the Islam, of the eternal peace, of the Salam. Thank you, Enris. So, dear friends, do you have any questions or comments? Everything is understood. <laughs> any questions or comments? Uh, I found it interesting the symbolic of the cross, and uh, while you were you were questioning, uh, you were asking that question. I was thinking. Is it because is it is it the reason why he used the symbol like the form of the human being? Basically, that's the form we have, literally. Like it's like the cross if we open up our hands. So it seems it seems quite universal, uh, even even if there was no Christianity in there at all. Yes, th thank you very much. It's uh, completely true what you said. It has nothing to do with Christianity in the form that we know today, of course. But it has completely to do with the Christianity as a traditional revelation, sacred, uh, of course, faith. And other, of course, as we said before, a revelation and sacred tradition, and as Islam is the last one that includes, include, sorry, all of them. As you said, it's a human being... Uh, symbolic it is not just outside us it's in us huh? when we do this vertically raise up our hand we are in this double uh, perspective but it's also in nature subhanallah if you see a tree what is doing a tree a big and a harmonious tree a big cherry tree it is doing the vertical and the horizontal barzak and it is also showing us that the divine, the presence divine, the Allah Almighty, creates some states of creations in order to understand better our own creation. He's giving ayah or signs, which are everywhere. And these are every time in a some symbolic way. God Almighty never say to you, I created this in order that you understand this and you do this. Every time he shows one part of that, and you have to realize the part which is meaning. This is also the meaning of symbolism. Symbolism in Greek means, old Greek, that it is a thing which is divided in two parts. For example, old piece of money. One part you have, it's your amanet, your amana, and the other part is hidden. It can be in the other part of the universe. It's up to you to follow and to look up. 
and to find it in order to realize the whole meaning. That's why in the last part of his life, he speaks only about that, only about that. And uh, he explains things which are incredible. I give you only one detail. You see that the cross uh, symbolic, it's one of the, of the signs of the symbolic. There are a lot of symbols that he wrote a book about symbols. This book was uh, published after, after his death by his one of his best, I think his best uh, student, which were also from Balkanic origin from Romania, which is Sheikh Mohammed Mustafa Valsan, sorry, the father of the actual Sheikh Mohammed Valsan. He was incredible. For me, uh, as I saw until today, they are in France, still not right now, his branch of Sufi Tariqa of Shadidi. They are maybe, maybe, Stavkura, the best in the world of following René Guénon tradition uh, lessons and apply his teachings. And when we re read this book, I'll put this book in the group after, inshallah. This is an incredible book about symbolism. It's for me by far the most important book in the world of all the tradition, of course, about the symbolism. And in this book, you have presented more than 100 symbol symbols, which are the most important symbols of other uh, traditions. And cross is one of them. <laughs> you see, there are a lot of others, of course. And uh, one of the things he, he, he he spoke about, which I was very, um, very amazed when I read that, especially I had the chance to read René Guénon original books because he was in, in French. And more you read uh, in tradition, I mean, in, in his own language, more you understand deep profoundings that are difficult to reach in tra translation. This is true for every very higher important book, of course, especially for revelated books. But of course, in translation, you can have Mashallah, great benefits. And he's in these books that are presented last time, inshallah, he's speaking he also about very important uh, symbolic of the religions. For example, for example, as us as Muslim, when you go to the to the Mecca, when you perform Umrah or when you perform Hajj, you are turning, doing tawaf towards the Kaaba. René Guénon, uh, as far as we know, he never went to India, he never went to Arabia. Maybe he went, but we don't know that. I'm not joking, it's true. As far as we know, he didn't went there. But he described things, that, subhanAllah, we are speaking now about Tejjali, about divine miracles. The people that went there and spiritual people said that, yes, he saw things that most of people don't see. And one of the things that he saw there, and he explained, of course, so this is a, one part of the book is saying this, in a very mathematical sense, because René Guénon, maybe I had to say at the beginning, was a great, great mathematician. So in most of the books he wrote, especially the last part of these slides, he's doing also some images, some graphics in order to understand better in mathematic way, uh, these spiritual topics. And explain that when you see the Kaaba, the cube, you see only the terrestrial, the, the Kaaba of the earth. Terrestrial, we say in French. But in order to connect with, uh, with the cross uh, symbolic to have the vertical axis, the Kaaba has a powerful spiritual, for him, the most spiritual, uh, the most spiritual, how to say in English, uh, center of the world, speaking about uh, energy, spiritual energy. And that's why in up to Kaaba, in the higher dimensions of the sky, but not very far away, just near, somewhere in the skies. There is also, a, uh, he called him the sky Kaaba. I don't know how it is exactly in French. I'm sorry, I have to verify it. But the idea is that the first one, it's in the cube. cube. We see it, of course, all we see it uh, in TV, even we don't go there. But there is another one which is completely different, which is more in triangle. And he's saying the esoteric meaning of the triangle. And he explained why it is completely important to have this, as, as I said before in this book, different states of being and different states of understanding. Because you understand, most of us, me first, often we understand just on dimension of things. Because our, in, our knowledge are limited. But when you start to have this spiritual access, you can perceive some realities that before you cannot perceive. They were there, but your eyes were veiled and you couldn't see them. 
So uh, the cross is one of the important uh, symbolic in order to understand that there is always a center. You can read this center by different traditions, of course, in there we are. He said it is better traditions for him are at the, you know, uh, how I'll say the sun. Uh, race. Race, thank you, come on, sun race. He said, you take your sun rays, the first one that is near you, because it's a new light of divine. Take, the, take that one, but completely go from this rays to the center of this rays, to the spiritual sun. And when you go to the center, of course, you'll do a horizontal uh, journey and after vertical journey. This is completely in, uh, necessary. You go in the heart and the others will come by other rays, but out of countries, out of traditions. And they come also in the heart because there's only one center, la ilaha illallah. All the work of Rene Guénon is the most metaphysic uh, saying in the world, which is la ilaha illallah. There is no more other metaphysics about that. And all the last part of this life is how to do it. In order to do it, you have to understand what is Muhammad Rasulullah, which is the vertical. Yes. Uh, and does he talk about any circle symbol? Because as far as I know, Ibn Arabi or other Sufis are like considered most of the time, I think there's a circle understanding. Exactly. When I'm speaking about sun, thank you very much. I didn't mention it. I would mention that it's a circle symbolic. And uh, Oftar Negano speaks about the difference of the circle and the point in the center of the circle. He's saying that the circle is the la circonference, we say in French of all the pos spiritual possibilities of the spiritual reali realization. And he says that the circle in, in Sufi tradition, we know that a little bit, of course, is the halk. And this halk, when you are doing zikr, zikr with other people, you are in this symbolically and spiritual circle, which is the halk. And this halk for him, it's indispo indis indisposable. It's very, very important to reach the, the center, which is the halk. Because otherwise, without initiation to a Sufi or let's say spiritual path, without a master, without a realization, for him it's impossible to, to reach this higher uh, understanding. Because most of them are not part of your journey, are part of the other Wali, saint person that did already this journey that facilitate you. And they do it, they're doing uh, their they are applying them in the now day meaning, not in the old meaning. For a Negano tradition is completely now right now as we're speaking. It's the most spiritual contemporary word possible. It is not at all the old one. And modernism, it is not at all the new mode we see in France. No, it is old uh, concept that means that the most important is not God, but it's man or it's what man did. So this is the difference when he's speaking about traditional modernity. Modernism is speaking about the spiritual war and a non spiritual war. Thank you. Uh, any other questions you. or comments? Okay, since no one has a comment, uh, I find it interesting though, again if the cross is connected to Christianity, because it's a profound symbol, even like that, I think. Uh, okay, we think that the Christ was in the uh, cross and then he died and then he was revived again. You know, like the Phoenix. I don't know if Guenon man mentions this or not, but I, I kinda think about the Hadith which says, uh, die before you die. So I, I find that symbol as well. I, I can see it uh, in the cross, like relating to Christianity, maybe the symbology of the Christianity, but I don't know if he connects uh, it in this sense as well. Yes, thank you very much. As I said before, uh, Rene Guénon speaks about uh, spiritual uh, access of understanding and not by forms when he speaks about some tradition as christianity he speaks in order to 
have access to the center of this tradition, but not the historical one. Even Islam, he never speaks about historic Islam. When he speaks about Islam in Raj, it's because it is much more higher than historic event. It's, uh, so uh, I am just verifying the book. I mean, I have a resume of the book in order not to say stuff about things which are not correct. He speaks just one or two about Sayyidina Isa, Jesus alayhi salam, in the book. He speaks about Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salam, every time in this book. And this is our problem today in modern world because we are used to see symbols in a vahir meaning, in outside meaning, in exoteric, not in the body meaning. And wh when you say to a Muslim, and Surya also asked me, I, I sorry, I forget to reply. How Muslims receive that? Most of the Muslims doesn't know what what is their nationalist. <laughs> Even zero, unfortunately, they know nothing. I, I'm sorry to say that, but this is a reality. Uh, of course, in France, in other countries, even less. Of course, some scholars that know him and they start to read him say it's interesting, but we don't have this tradition because, unfortunately, most of them doesn't know this uh, tra this primary tradition, Din al Hanif, which is in their own religion in Islam, of course. So in this book, to answer Ervina's question, he speaks especially of the Sina Muhammad Sallallahu example of the al al Miraj, which is for him the most, the greatest uh, vertical and uh, horizontal realization of that the prophet and then a human being can do, of course. Because from the beginning of his life, when he was very, very uh, young in Blois, we had a chance to go to his Town and to do a concert in his church where he did baptization, he didn't accept the, the church uh, dogmatic point of view because he said there is only one God, like a lot point. So he didn't waste time, I mean, with other Christian uh, point of view. So that's why when he's speaking about prophets, he's speaking about not historic prophets, trans historic prophets. It is not the prophet we know historically by, let's say, historical source. It is his, of course, but his historical uh, message as the message of Christ, Sinaisa, it is just one part of his spiritual being. And that's why he's speaking about <laughs> Vedantism, I mean, Hinduism and Taoism, also in this book, of course. So in the book of the cross, of the symbolism La Croix, Beside Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Isa Miraj, he's speaking about the two axes which are horizontal and vertical in the Hinduism tradition, which are the feminine and masculine one, uh, Prakriti and Prakusha. He's speaking also Purusha, so Purusha and Prakriti. These are in uh, Hinduist tradition, which are two axes, the feminine and masculine one, which present these two vertical and horizontal journeys. He speaks also about uh, Buddhism in this book. And he speaks, I mean, not the Buddhism, nothing to do with Buddhism we know today, of course, because Buddhism is a part of Hinduism. Buddhism is a schism of Hinduism. Yeah? But uh, in this idea of the traditional Hinduism that we see also in Buddhism, we have the principle of the Buddha yeah, in Hinduism, which is a guide that it is guiding the spiritual evolution of the, of the man. Because he also did this, double uh, vertical and horizontal realization. Uh, when you see the story of the Buddha, if you know a little bit, the moment who he was in Nirvana, in deliverance, as the Christ, and the moment he was in deliverance, he reached the center uh, of his vertical and horizontal uh, journey. And just to finish, he's speaking about also Shiva in traditional Hinduism. And he's speaking about what we say, the Graal, the Graal of the Christ, which is the blood, like the heart of the Christ, symbolized by the excellence of the knowledge of the divine in Christianity. So he's speaking about the knowledge of the divine in Christianity, which is not exactly the knowledge of the passion of Christ, of Christ, we say, a passion of Christ. This is Christian dogma. For him, in the Tawhid point of view, in the unicity of being, in Wahdat al Wujud, the, the knowledge divine in Christianity is the knowledge of God. It's not the knowledge of Christ. 
Christ is Kalimatullah, the word of Allah. So he remained until the end of the times, the word spiritually esoteric of Allah. But he is one as other uh, prophet that reach, of course, this very, very high mark. Ibn Arabi says that when I write Futuat al Mekia and also uh, the book of the prophet, uh, I, I don't have the title now. He said, Sidna Isa Islam spoke me directly. I had, a, uh, yes, I had an uh, initiation directly from Sidna Isa. So if Renegade no doesn't give to Sidna Isa this uh, only exclusive realization of the cross, it's not to negligence him, not at all. It's to say that this is a universal symbolic, that is not at all Christian symbolic. The same thing it's with the uh, Sidna Suleiman seal in Judaism. It is also a very old symbolic, which all, which was from Mediterranean, uh, all the tradition before monotheist even. And in Islam, if you go, of course, alhamdulillah, we are especially Turkish and with Balkanic people right now, mostly of all the mosques of traditional Islamic Turkey, let's say Ottoman time, Balkan and Romania, have the Sina Ali Suleiman seal or Sina Daud seal. It is not seal of the, as we understand only Jewish. So René Guénaud explained all these things from the beginning of this first book. That's why his first book was about Hindu, Hindu doctrine. It is not to speak about Hinduism. It is to speak about the first revelation in order to understand the why and the button of this revelation. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Andrews. By the way, Pleasure, Regina. Thank you. I think no questions or comments. That's fine. But you will keep on talking about his books in the next presentation, right, Enris? Yes, yes. I will keep uh, speaking about it next time. I thank you very much for, for being there. And shall I hope to have the chance and honor to continue to speak about his last part of his life.